here we are viewing out in front of our camp this is a document to show how landlocked we are this is what Roger Lambert wants to steal from us here is and or was a beautiful camp what is which is literally falling apart you look at this how does anyone how can you people down in Augusta sit back and let this happen to people this was immaculate can you see the deterioration I don't overly appreciate this this was absolutely perfect. This is what Roger Lambert stole from us. Here's looking up the driveway that used to come into the camp. This was all perfect, beautiful gravel driveway with a lawn that was able to be mowed with a lawnmower. But now we need a sickle mower, as you can see, to return it to its former state. And I will continue the video at the top of the camp yard. Here we are at the top of the driveway viewing back at the camp. As you can see it's very beautiful. This is a road that we just come in on. This is supposedly the road that Lambert lied to the courts about that said we could use. And I'll film that on the way back out. Well, this is a road that's been here since the 1850s, we know of at least, because that's when our deed, 1852, says. This was a road that you can drive a state police car out, because the state police come out here while this road was landlocked. And I mean you can drive a Cadillac out here. And that is the area that the town's ice pond used to be in, which they lied said didn't exist here. And this is also an airstream that's landlocked. We're going to ask you if you can pull that airstream up over that road we're going to go out in a minute. Remember, this road's been here since the 1850s. And that is the town's ice pond, which they fed the whole town of Strong for 40 years, mind you now, out of the ice from that pond. And I can show you the berm and the hand-shoveled area that they excavated to build the pond dam. This field also was mowed and maintained. See how nice what's left of this road. Wow, it's a really nice road. So we come around to this ancient right-of-way and what do we see? Look what Roger Lambert has done now. This is totally against the law. This is a violation of law, main law. You tell me something ain't wrong with this show. You look at that road, that's our right of way that Roger Lambert stole from us through a fraudulent court case. And I do mean very fraudulent. We sure would like to use this road again to get back to our camp. And we will get it back. I hope you understand. 
Now, if somebody something happens to somebody at my camp, how's the rescue going to get in? Somebody's going to be uh, liable if someone just so happens to perish out there by an accident or what have you. Who's going to be responsible? Just want to show you our way of cooking and whatnot. This is a uh, hundred pound tanks. I want to show you the road that we would have to uh, bring these tanks out. And this is our water system. And that we have a tank that's just like that that we pump full of water and then pump back up to there, which is way more bulkier than that. So as, as of this point, we have no way to uh, deliver propane or water to our beloved camp. So uh, we're going to continue our journey out, and we're going to show you the roads that Mr. Lambert lied to the courts and said that we had access to use. Just a little note on the way up out of the camp road. That picnic table used to be one of the places that we've had numerous wonderful and joyous times up here. This used to be nice and beautifully raked and mowed. Abandoned. Thank you very much. This is a trail that goes out to the ice pond dam, which is right across from the camp. This is where our line ends right here, the road. And our landline is right there by that big pine tree. So we're, and our land goes off in that direction. Pretty clean, clear that ain't no way out of here. And that's, we're gonna go out that road, but we're gonna go show you the berm of the ice pond before we leave. I don't know how clear this is, but this is the berm that was built. This is facing back towards the camp we were just looking at. That they claimed was a beaver dam. And this is nothing more than a beaver pond, but Mr. Lambert was in the uh, historical society for I don't know how many years, and he knows this is a historical ice pond and he knows this is where the town got their ice for 40 years and this is the spot and this is the berm and anybody can plainly see that this was hand excavated out of here this is where the soil came from I'd like to see a beaver do all that it's amazing what that beaver could do just another little note. Uh, according to Mr. Lambert and his lawyer, we had no vested interest in this property. Well, that truck tie has been there since the 40s or the 50s when this was just a log landing. And there's my Uncle Maley's, who is now deceased and got screwed out of being able to access his property before he left us. That's where he used to have his filing shack. Uh, you know? And here we go. And I'm going to take you out that road, which is, this is the landing. Right here that uh, them guys had their wood business on when they didn't have it up at their other landing, which I'm going to show you before we leave here. The other camp and and the abandoned uh, woods business that we would drove off from by the police. Now look, this is the only other way, the only other road that there is, as you've seen, I have circled this property in front of that camp. There's the wasted firewood that wasn't being able to haul out. This is all ready for somebody to burn. And it was December when we were drove off. They didn't get their firewood. Now it's no good. What a waste of work. And here we go into Roger Lambert's 
road that he says we can access. I want to ask you how you think we can drag that airstream out of here. You call this a passable road? It's a brook. And this is no more than the Skidder Road to access that land into this woodlot that we're walking into. Would you like to drive your airstream out through here? Because until you recognize that we're landlocked, that airstream will never ever leave this property. It'll be there forever. And my cousin wants to move it to another camp lot. Is he going to move it this way? Hell, I can't even hardly walk out through here. Here we go, driving on. Where's this road go? This is the road that everyone expects us to use to access our camp. Now how would you like to be able to drive to your camp down this road? How would you like to be told that you could use this road to get to your camp? Look at it. It's a damn skitter road. And where does it go? Ha! Look at that. Where does it go? Right to the middle of a woodlot. Now, if you did get that airstream to here, where the hell are you going to go with it from here? Going to have to get a skitter and a bulldozer to hook on that to continue to drag it through the muck and the rocks and the trees to there. There we go. Now, if you can't plainly see what we're trying to tell you, now we're going to go walk back and I'm going to show you the trail that we have to use to come down over the bank to get to our camp. Now, here we are. We're back on that trail. I just took you down that wonderful road Roger Lambert wants us to use. Well, this is how we get in here now. Down over, this is my uncle Skidder Trail. This is how my mother has to access her camp. Seventy some odd year old woman. She's got death take her four wheeler across this. Now we've had to build this to get across this brook because we tried coming down through here before and we got our four wheelers stuck. Can you imagine lugging a propane tank or you know 250 gallons of water down through here in that tank? My brother's out there hunting, sorry about that, scared me too. But there's the road, and I'm going to take a few shots on the way up through. Would you want to uh, bring your propane tanks in through there? Now, it's about probably 150 yards to the top of that bank, and it gets worse before we get to the top. Now, here we are, just starting up this hill. Maybe you can... Show me a place to pull an airstream up out of here. My cousin really does want to move his airstream to another camp lot. I'm going to tell you, I don't know if you can make this out on here or not, but this is one steep bank. And this is the trail that we have to use with our wheelers. And it beats a living snot right out of us. Here we are, we're just about across the top. You see. Look, the water's running right down this man. It's a skitter road. Would you want to drive your car down through here? Because we used to be able to drive a car to our camp. In case you didn't notice that. Now as soon as we get to the top, we're going to be on the skitter roads that go down to my uncle's wood processing area and his land and landing and his 
camp in Skittishack that he was drove off from. And you ask me if we have any vested interest. Because we was told we didn't have any vested interest in this property. And this is all... Now we're now on the vote a lot. Who just happened to be my uncles. And just so you know, I'm also here to be their advocate and fight for what they lost. Because we lost it all together. My grandfather left us this land to enjoy and harvest the lumber. And if he knew what happened, that poor man would turn in his grave. Especially knowing that Milt Baston the town selectman that's fighting us so hard to help Roger Lambert keep us from this property supposed to be my cousin, my mother's sister's son who has helped Lambert. So we do believe that him and Lambert are trying to steal this from us. You can take that however you want to take it. We see it no other way. And you know something? We don't want to lose this. We're now on the Skidder Road that goes out to Maley's Landing. So I'm going to start filming right now and I'll start when we get to the landing. We've made it out to the landing. That's the road that we just come up out of, the Skidder Road. Skidder Road, but Old County Road. This road didn't end in an ice pond. This road ended up out on out towards Porter Lake but that goes through several land owners between here and there and I'm not even gonna bother to walk up there because we got we have no interest in going up there because this like I said there's several land owners and woodlots up there well no vested interest this land this is a woodland and this ain't a field there was thousands of cords of firewood processed on this landing. No vested interest. That was their living. They made a living sawing firewood and logs. And take a look at this, mind you. The men worked so hard to get this lumber out of here. And look, abandoned to rot. And there's literally thousands of dollars worth of logs and firewood that were forced to be abandoned on this land. And this was what my uncle was going to pay his taxes with. You know, he had to pull that money out of his ass to pay his taxes because we were forcibly driven from our property. Look at this pile of logs. What a, sh what a total shame to do this to anyone. In the middle of a work day in December... December 11th, 2008, forced from this job site, vested interest, anybody with brain damage can see that these people have vested interest to be up here, look at this firewood, that was the, he had orders filled, and I want to remind you that that, the man that cut all this wood is now deceased, he passed away of cancer. This was his living, abandoned, not just abandoned, but forcedly abandoned. Look at the thousands of dollars worth of wood. This was that man's living. Do you understand? Do you, do you understand the vested interest? There's his skitter shed. How much was my uncle here? Well, enough to keep his skitter in a shed which means he's here he was here all the time look at these beautiful hardwood logs that are now junk unbelievable that a man could do this to another man and when we say thousands of dollars worth of wasted timber we ain't kidding 
sorry for the interruption, but you can see, man, this, this ain't, this wasn't no small time operation. And there's my brother's load of firewood that he was going to haul out of here. Had to burn green wood that year. And the only reason it ain't rotten right now is because that tarp's on there. This landing has been in use since the late 30s and early 40s. And it's been used continuously since then. Now we're going to walk down to my uncle's cabin. Where his last dying wish was to come here and pass. And we haven't even been able to bring the ashes up. This is where he wants to rest for eternity. But unfortunately, you can see how we can get in. That man loved this camp more than anything in the world. And he had it stolen from him through a fraudulent court case. Because mail-in voters' name was on that court case. And what a shame that anyone would want to take anything what a shame it would be to anyone want to take this away from someone that man had to take this to his grave he he had to go to he went to his grave not in peace because he lost all of this the man's pride and joy and if you ain't got no heart to think that that man loved every little bit about this little shack. Well, you're highly mistaken. It's truly, truly heartbreaking to my family to know that Roger Lambert did this to us. And now we're going to walk down his landing road. And I'm going to show you the stone wall blocking his road to access this landing that's been here. And another deeded right away, mind you. We used to have a deed for this right away too, just like we do the one down there. Can't you see how much that we've lost here? And I want you to explain to me why we don't have a vested interest in any of this. Could you please explain that to me? Just a little note. This is the landing we just left. And we walk through and hit another huge wood landing. This is a stone wall, is a stone wall but that's on our property or the family's property or whatever you want to call it. Can you see this uh, landing? See any vested interest here? And we're going to walk down because the stone wall is across the road down as far as you can see. And when we get down there, we'll continue filming. That's how far it is. I don't know if you caught what my brother Phil said, but if you zoom in, you can see town. And that is how far it is for us to have to walk through the woods. Okay? Here we are, halfway down this landing. And there's the filing shack. Now that dinner shack right there has been here for a long, long time. And I bet my uncle's filed off about 10,000 chains in that filing shack, keeping his saw, saw shop to make a living. We're almost to the end of the landing. Here we are, right across from that shack, filing shack. More wasted wood, full of worms and rotten. What a shame. Here we are approaching the bottom of the landing. Same view. Pretty, ain't it? Now this is a right away. Deeded right away. For the voters to access their woodlot. Through this fraudulent court case, 
this is what we're dealing with. Another violation of blocking a right away. Two violations. Well, that was a uh, nice clean forest. This is Mr. Lambert's land. Look what he did. Look what Mr. Lambert has done to his land. He can cut all the wood he wants. This was a very productive forest just a, a two months ago. Look at it. How come he can cut his wood and we can't cut ours? Can't you see the continuance of the road down there through this devastation? We never, ever would cut our woodlots to look like this. And look at this trench right across another right-of-way. Did you see them camps in there? How's the fire department going to get up in there? How's someone going to get up in there if someone's hurt? Are they going to drive their fire truck over that and through this? People, this is a crime. This is our land. Was put here last Friday. This was put here a week ago, uh, one, uh, one week ago, Friday of last week. Uh, Mr. Lambert can't put a stone wall across the budding landowner's property without their permission. And I'm going to tell you right now, there's 30 some odd members in this family and none of us gave him permission to do this. Crimes, one right after the other. And it's about time you people did something about it. This is, a, this is not supposed to happen in the state of Maine. This is theft and fraud and despicable. I just want you to know that them boys put a lot of money in this landing because they were planning on expanding their wood business. And Lambert and his cronies shut, literally shut this... 50 some odd year old log operation down. Do you see any devastation in this log cutting since I've been filming and it looks like what Mr. Lambert's lot looks like? 210 acres of prime forest land that cannot be accessed. I hope you heard that. Now, if you can't plainly see that we need a little bit of help up here to put an end to this man's fraudulent activity and this continuous ring of crimes, then maybe you people in Augusta are blinder than I think. We'll be speaking soon. Once again, we're going to continue down that road Roger Lambert says our family can use, and there's Uncle Maley's camp. And here we go, into this beautiful, beautiful road that Lambert says is accessible with a vehicle. This is it, mind you. There's no other way. According to Lambert, this is the way in. And he lied to the courts and said this road existed, which is fraud. That's enough reason right there to throw it out, not to mention all the other reasons. Do you want to drive your car out through here? Or your truck? It ain't easy to drive a four-wheeler out here. This is the road that Lambert lied to everybody else and said was the way we get in here. Listen, you want to drive your car down through here? Because we've been able to drive cars to our camps for 70 years plus. And this ain't the way that we've ever accessed them camps except for in the middle of the winter on a snowmobile. And there was never a four-wheeler trail here until we were forced to use it as one. This is our access. Through all of that, lugging all of our water and our propane. Can you about imagine? You're going to get stuck. And it gets worse as we go, and, and we're headed out towards town now, mind you. It's a mile and a quarter back to my camp. And this is how we got to do it. Once again, we're going to continue down that road Roger Lambert says our family can use. And there's Uncle Maley's camp. And here we go. 
into this beautiful, beautiful road that Lambert says is accessible with a vehicle. This is it, mind you. There's no other way. According to Lambert, this is the way in. And he lied to the courts and said this road existed, which is fraud. That's enough reason right there to throw it out, not to mention all the other reasons. Do you want to drive your car out through here? Or your truck? It ain't easy to drive a four-wheeler out here. This is the road that Lambert lied to everybody else and said was the way we get in here. Listen, do you want to drive your car down through here? Because we've been able to drive cars to our camps for 70 years plus. And this ain't the way that we've ever accessed them camps except for in the middle of the winter on a snowmobile. And there was never a four-wheeler trail here until we were forced to use it as one. This is our access. Through all of that, lugging all of our water and our propane. Can you about imagine? You're going to get stuck. And it gets worse as we go. And, and we're headed out towards town now, mind you. It's a mile and a quarter back to my camp. And this is how we got to do it. We probably walked a half a mile. This is our access now. This is my uncle's land, and he gives us permission to go through here when it's dry. So as long as this trail looks like this, and it does probably 70% of the year, because this is nothing but a damn swamp. And, you know, we can't go up to our camp with a four-wheeler because we would destroy this man's trail and if we tried to lug you know 30 or 40 gallon container or more or a hundred pound propane tank gonna destroy this so as of right now we have to walk now here we are finally coming out I think you'll find the only improvement on this road is right here. This is this is our paved road into our camp. Ha ha. But here we come out in the top of my uncle's field, which is the old apple orchard from Gramps. We grew up as kids here. This is our road. If you try to drive a car up in here during most parts of the year, you're stuck. My 74-year-old mother was born in that house that you're looking at. That's right. All the ones that are being ridiculed through this whole ordeal of born and raised right on that farm right down there. Shame on Roger Lambert. This is the road. We're supposed to use. Listen to it. You can't drive a truck in here right now. And here's the homestead. My aunts, my uncles. Mr. Lambert lives just beyond, and he drives by their house every day. But we can't drive by his without him having a tizzy. Well, we're going to ride out there by his house, and you're going to see the other end of them roads. And it's only about 900 feet. From where we were blocked off to where you saw them stone walls. 900 feet. I just want to make note as we back out of our camp road, because we can't get in there as you know, that if you notice that road was Roger's new camp road, well, I don't think he got Wendell's permission, Wendell voters permission to put that road within 25 feet of that landline. It's against the law, and it's about time this lawless thug 
was put away. And if you don't see enough information here to even consider an investigation, then I don't know what, how much more proof, you, visual proof you need. But we do have documented proof as well as deeds. So, it gets better. This visual is better. The ITS That's the ITS trail. It had to be moved. It used to be right here. And it also used to go up the Voter Ridge Road. That, they had to change the whole state of Maine ITS trail map just to please Mr. Lambert. And there's his posted sign right there. And you're going to see how much land this man owns on both sides of this road and claims it all as his. But by the way, we have an easement to cross this. Yes, we do have an easement to cross this. Dickey Road, which is still a county road, and he claims, claims it's been discontinued, but only to maintenance only. This is what the discontinuance is all about. They never seem to want to continue and, and let people know the truth. They just use partial information as fact, and you need the whole truth to prove fact. Here you go, about 300 yards. But everything out there he's claimed is his own. This is home right there. Everything we just passed through, he's claimed for himself. He thinks he owns it all. But as you can see, doesn't own it all because we have a very large vested interest out there and the fact that they submitted that is as a proof in the court that we have no vested interest out there well we do have vested interest out there and this is mr. Baston's house the town official that's helped him through his fraudulent activity and I think you'll be speaking with him eventually He's also committed several crimes. He's a guy, main guy that he, works for Mr. Lambert. He's a strong town official and also supposed to be our cousin, but you don't need to go there. Down around the corner to my mother's house. And Mr. Lambert drives by there, all these people's houses every day, 50 times a day. October 5th. 2011. The rest of this film was done on October 3rd, 2011. At the end of the camp road, this is the so-called Dickey Trail. Now the road goes that way. This is the road up and it comes in from the valley. I want to make a note about something the other day too. Looks like a gate at the end of the hike through the forest up that road and it's not. It's a blowdown. It's a mile and a half back through the woods from that spot that I stopped all the way out until you hit another road. This is a busy spot. It always has been. But that's the other end of that road. Just in a little bit from there and 900 feet to my camp to where the stone wall is across the camp road. This is the end of the Voter Ridge Road up where my Uncle Maley's camp was and that little tree line you can see right up there with the birches swinging in the breeze that's only how close that stone wall is up there. Why would we want to go any other way? And this is our right of way. The boat is right away to their landing, and the road back there is the right away to my camp. 
And out there the other day when we was walking, there was Jimmy and Milt Voters. Land is also landlocked out there, and Milt Baston's land's also on the other side of that, on the wrong side of that stone wall. I don't know what he's thinking. Lots 31 A, B, and C. They're 100% landlocked. Here we are out at Lambert's line, 900 feet from here to that stone wall. And here he is. This is the road he has to use to get into his camp now because he can't go through Thorndike's property anymore. The man we got the easement from. And that road is a little closer than 25 feet. I don't think that's quite legal, but then again, what that man does, what is it legal that he does, you know? We're really tired of it. 